The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. I'm Ben Spearman, Bronx Opera's General Director, and I'm here to welcome you to this presentation of the Bronx Opera on BronxNet. You're about to see a performance from 2019 of Giancarlo Minotti's 1950 opera, The Consul. Minotti won the Pulitzer Prize for this intense music drama, which tells the story of Magda Sorel's struggle to free her family from an oppressive regime and join her freedom fighter husband, John, in a neighboring free country. She seeks help from a lo the local consulate of that unnamed neighboring country, only to witness how all asylum seekers are met with bureaucratic red tape and a lack of compassion at the consulate. These factors lead her to question the nature of freedom and ask, ask herself whether anyone, is, anyone alive is truly free from the requirements that are set down by all countries on pieces of paper. This performance featured Caroline Tai as Magda's mother-in-law, Jeremy Moore as John Sorrell, Joseph Gansert as the secret police agent and Karis Search as the secretary of the consulate. The other asylum seekers Magda meets at the consulate are portrayed by Daniel Fultz Morrison, Ben Hoyer, Leslie Swanson, Francesca Federico, Amy Maud Helfer, and Conrad Schmechel. This production was conducted by Eric Kramer and directed by Rod Gomez with lighting by Joshua Rose and scenery and costumes by McGann George with production management by Scott H. Schneider. Last and of course, and absolutely not least, our Magda Sorrell in this performance was Mary Hollis Hundley, who we'll hear from at the first intermission. Now we take her to Lehman College's Leveringer Theater on Sunday afternoon, January 19th, 2019 and Bronx Opera's production of The Consul.
hurt my leg. It isn't serious, but it hurts. I had to run it on all the way home. Mother, close the window. Spread its bitter 
woman. My mother. When did you see your husband last? Two weeks ago. <coughs> Two weeks ago? You expect me to believe that? Yes, indeed. Or do we like to give people a second chance? Where's your husband? I don't know. Have you expected back? I don't know. Is your child? Yes. For the sick and looking baby, and his father away. Is that his jacket? Yes. Very interesting. Very. And why don't you expect him back?
Thank you. 
se in un paio di mesi. Un paio di mesi? Ma signore! She needs her right away. Nothing I can do. Yes, but not 
hearted, madam. My name is Nicholas Maganoff, the world famous magician. I'm sorry, I never go to the theatre. Obviously. <laughs> Nevertheless, would you mind if I practiced one of my tricks on you? It would help us both pass the time. Oh, no, please. I'm afraid of tricks. Oh, but there's nothing to it. Do you see this little ball? Now you see it. Now you don't. 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 Hello and welcome back to the Bronx Opera on BronxNet and this performance of Menotti's The Consul. We have with us today Mary Hollis Hunley, who is portraying the role of Magda Sorrell in the production and performance that you're watching. Hello, Mary Hollis. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you all for tuning in. Good, good. Thank you. Too. Thanks for coming today. Um, what? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are right now, and and your general personal educational background and all that stuff. Sure. So I'm in Louisville, Kentucky right now. I'm here for a couple days as a pit stop between things. Uh, I'm heading to the Glimmerglass Festival in upstate New York uh, for the rest of the summer. I'll be there. Um, 
I grew up here in Louisville and I did um, my high school education at a magnet school here in the city where I um, majored in voice. So I kind of seriously got into singing in high school. And then I went to University of Kentucky for my undergraduate. And then I moved to New York City uh, to go to the Manus School, who was like for my master's. Um, how did you come to Bronx Opera? I auditioned for Bronx Opera. When was the first time? I guess it was, wow, six or seven years ago now mm -hmm. um, for Sir John in Love, the Vaughn Williams that was done a few seasons ago. Right. And there were a few shows that where you were considering auditioning, but then you, you got something else that conflicted and, and as happens with, with many singers, our rehearsal period is, is a little longer in part because we need to do rehearsals really kind of after work and our weekends. And so the process in terms of the calendar takes a little bit longer. And so if you're going to be out of town for a bulk, a, a bulk of that period, you, you really can't do our shows as currently constituted. And I know you were considering um, Regina, which was, I think the year or two before that, uh, that Falstaff season. But yeah, you came to us, I guess, yeah, Sir John in Love was the first of the two shows you did with us yes. yeah. of so far. And um, the console was number two. So um, what, I, before we get into the console, I just wanted to ask you what you've been up to during the pandemic. Oh gosh, lots of life changes, I'm sure, like everyone else. Um, it, the pandemic has kind of included multiple moves. I moved, I was in the city uh, when it first started, and so I moved um, home to Louisville for a few months. Then I moved uh, to St. Louis, where I've been since um, about September, I guess. And after Glimmerglass, who knows? It will be another big move. I'm not sure where yet. Things are still um, kind of up in the air in the industry as a whole, but also like with what my next season may look like and what my job situation may look like. So um, still trying to figure out some singing things, but I, I used some of this downtime to really focus on um, my other passion and my other degree, which is arts administration. And so I've been... Um, pretty active in some advocacy groups for young artists. And I was recently um, elected to the Board of Governors for the um, American Musical Artists Union, AGMA. So I just started serving with them. Uh, gosh, last week, I guess, was our first official week, so. And you've been working a little bit with us on some grant writing and stuff and with other organizations too. And like, like so many other singers, it isn't just about the, the the one thing you know professionally and in terms of just making making enough cash to uh put some food on the table i mean you've got some some jobs that are not you know they're not what you what you went to school for let's put it that way right yeah but we're, we're all multifaceted and we all have um many lifelines on top of singing even yeah. if performing is what we wish we were doing full-time so yeah. yeah yeah it's it's something i think people don't necessarily no, if, they, if you think about it for a moment, you know, uh, uh, you, you can make some money and sometimes you can make a pretty good living in opera, but sometimes you just have to figure out two, three, four other things to do as you are continuing to audition and get yourself out there into, as, a, as a singer or, or whatever you do. Um, so I wanted to now move on to the console a little bit. Um, this is a very... It's a, it's a very, obviously, a dramatic show, as the audience has already seen in Act One. Um, what attracts, attracted you to Magda, to auditioning for Magda, and also in general to this or to Amer and or to, um, to English language and American opera in general? Sure. I, I find that I, I've done a lot of English or English language opera, and I think there's something really special about singing in your native tongue, um, especially when the composer wrote it in that language and it was meant for that language. And I'm always drawn to um, these big dramatic pieces where the acting is, you know, just as important, if not more important um, than sometimes the sounds that come out of your mouth. <laughs> so um, she is such an incredible woman and she goes through so much in this piece and you get to really see her transformation over the acts and the different scenes. Um, so music completely aside, I was really drawn to 
the words and the actions and um, her character. It's a very, it is a very interesting evolution that she undergoes because I think it's, you, you might say that at the beginning, her dedication to the cause that her husband, John, and his compatriots are, are you know, pushing for is maybe not as strong as John's. Is that a fair statement, you think? Sure. I mean, it, it starts when I mean, she's at home. She has a newborn, basically. So maybe maybe her convictions were as strong, but she wasn't able to go out with a young, young child. Um, right. You know, he's, he's gone a lot. Um, so we can assume that he's heavily active while she's kind of stuck in the not knowing and she's not getting the updates that she wants and needs and she's um, kind of toiling and I think sometimes not knowing is worse than maybe knowing so um, the stress levels are very high. Yeah and we've, we've just seen the first the first consulate scene in which she kind of begins to get the sense of of what this is going to, going to be like what this process will be and and she sees the the other people that are with her in the consulate having these experiences, and she she watches them, and she goes, "Okay, this is this isn't going to be walking in and signing a thing and getting out." Um, so, the, our production is it was a very spare production in terms of its the physical the physical values of it. How did you? you feel that affected the way you played the character and the general feeling of the production for you as opposed to maybe some other kind of vision that you might have had of, of the physical plot of the show? Sure. I, I think this really allowed for us to make the characters our own. We weren't boxed in in any way. There wasn't like a super clear time period or place where we were. And so, I mean, unfortunately, this... Um, topic of the piece is like fairly it's still common and it's still happening and so you really can set it in almost any time period you want and it's applicable to now it happened years ago it's going to continue to happen um so i really enjoyed how you know i wouldn't really say sparse we had everything we needed <laughs> we had the big the big pieces and um we were able to really move around them and focus on the emotions of the characters maybe instead of you know logistical things mm -hmm. um was there anything in particular that as we were going to prepare to do this interview which this process was not a very long process because we talked about this a few minutes before we actually did this interview but do you have any particular memories of the production that you'd like to share anything that you remember from back then i mean a lot's gone on since 2019 obviously for all of us, but do you have any particular memories of, of the product itself? Oh gosh, I mean, nothing but amazing memories. It was, um, I'm not sure if everyone knows who's watching, but um, the Bronx Opera productions are usually double cast. Mm -hmm. So um, while we were split up into our separate cast pretty early on, we are always there to watch the other casts. And so I think I learned a lot and gleaned a lot and still had a very different Magda than my colleague who was singing the other cast. But um, it's really inspirational to have another group um, putting this piece together. And so um, that was really special and in, in a lot of um, principal work that I do at other companies we're the only cast and we'll have a cover, but it's not usually a double cast situation. So that might have been the last time that I was doubled. Um, and I really enjoy it. And I think, especially when you have a good colleague and a good friend as your other person, um, it's a really special experience. So that was great. And um, one of my oldest colleagues, one of my best friends on the planet was also in the production. Um, I met a lot of people that I've kept in contact with and have continued to stay in the industry and sing. And so it was just a really great group and a really talented group. Um, and I think you, you have to have a group like that for a piece like this, because while it is in English and it might sound easy in some ways, it was really, it's a difficult score and a difficult story. And so to feel confident um, musically as well as 
in your acting choices, you have to have a lot of trust um, in the rest of the cast. Yeah, I, I, it is. You, you make a very good point that Bronx Opera isn't a matter of, of having a, an A and a B cast. It really is is two A casts. And your double, um, Marina Harris, was real different from you, very compelling. You're very different performers, but I could imagine that you'd get a lot from just watching each other and even not, you know, you not to copy, but like to watch and, and kind of get a sense of another way to do it that gives you, it gives you some perspective, a really full perspective. And in this production, I think almost every role was double cast. So everybody had that experience of watching each other and saying, okay, well, I'm, that's not how I'm going to do it, but I'm watching this really viable way of, of playing this role and singing this really difficult music. It is extremely complicated. Yeah. I mean, she would sing certain lines with a completely different um, acting choice. Mm -hmm. and sometimes those don't even occur to you. Um, and you're just like, that's how I would sing it. And then you see it, you're like, oh, wow, that's really strong and makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah, it really does open up a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of creativity and learning opportunities. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see people really working together to create the, the, the role. You know, you're creating the role with someone else and then you're performing it yourself in your own way. So it's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing for everybody to understand about the way Bronx, Bronx works, that there really is this entire team that's putting this together. It's not just the people you're seeing on stage and the performance you happen to be watching. It's really everybody on stage and off, but especially with the double casts. Yeah. You love the piece and you loved your first experience. Try to go back and see mm -hmm. the cast because you really, it will be like a different, a different performance. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have right now, Mary Hollis. Um, thank you so much for joining, for joining me today. Um, and we'll see you down the road. And thank you all for watching this interview and now back to this performance from January 19th, 2019. Is it really only two years ago? Of Minotti's The Consul.
Hello. Is this a saw in the glass cutter? This is Mrs. Sorrell. Will you please come to my house to replace the broken pane in my window? Yes. Yes, please hurry. It is bitter cold. He'll be right over. Mother, come, come here, fill my heart. Don't tell 
media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> at the end of the line. I wait patiently for hours and hours. When my turn finally comes, it's time for the consulate to close. Well, if you're not too long. I'm sorry, but I cannot make an exception. There are other people waiting in line. It would upset our system. Next. Next. Thank you. <laughs> My charming mademoiselle, you have the honor of speaking with no other than Nika Magaroff. Who? Yes. Remember, Mika Magadoff, illusionist, telepathist, and prestidigitator, hypnotist, ventriloquist, electrolevitator, in short, the great magician. A glass.
make a living. Next. <laughs>
to your secretaries, human beings like us.
tracked me down. They're outside the building waiting for me. Here I am safe. Oh, no, I cannot keep you here. But what would you have me outside? I have authority to keep you here. I am just a trouble. What were you doing? Mr. Sorel. Yes. Of my own free will. At least allow me to call up my wife. You can do it at headquarters.
Thank you.